around today. Going 40 miles an hour here on Interstate 20. The roads are mostly just wet with slush now. Not a whole lot of ice, but there are patchy spots. Jax is uh, just gonna sleep off the trip. And, uh, but all of the access roads and almost all of the off ramps and on ramps are just a solid sheet of ice. So what happens is a lot of times people just put their four way flashers on right before. Truck off the highway. Yes, people still speed past me for some reason. Lots of accidents still. It's 28 degrees in this town of Sweetwater, Texas that I'm going through right now. But there's so many cars driving over the highway that it's kind of just turning the ice into more wet stuff. Still, I'm not taking a risk. They can pass me. Uh, the worst part is when the boys, when the trucks pass, like what's coming right now, it really, it's like almost like two hands on the steering wheel type of white knuckling it. Well, this guy's not going by fast, but I'm up on a bridge where it's icy on the bridge and I see a truck approaching, I'll compensate for it so that I'll either let him go by before I get to the bridge or I'll speed up a little bit to get over the bridge before he passes because I don't want to be in that. See, there's ice in the left lane but not in the right lane. Just depends. It does look like I'm gonna to get to Fort Worth before uh, sundown today, which is great because Fort Worth's daytime temperatures are above freezing, better driving conditions. So anyway, all right, let me get back to it. Talk to you guys later. That was a nice cool little break. I just got gas for a dollar eighty-three. Dollar eighty-three a gallon. It's the cheapest gas I have paid in years. Uh, the entire traffic eastbound on 20 has been redirected to the access road that runs parallel to the freeway. And we're finally finding out why they're not allowing anybody on the freeway. They've got it completely blocked off up here at the overpass. Actually, it's not the police that have blocked it off, it's that semi-truck right there. <laughs> he is technically blocking the entire interstate. But the good news is I think once we get past him, they're going to let us back up there. Hmm. I guess that answers my question, is there still ice on the road? Alright, I pulled off to a little uh, picnic area here off Highway 20. It's 32 degrees right now, and it's pretty much just bare and wet. I like to like come out here sometimes and just kind of, kind of test the roads. With my feet, you know? Come out here, make sure it's wet. It's no ice. Also, while I'm driving, I've been keeping an eye over on the um, access roads off to my right for how well vehicles are moving there, and also looking for black ice as well. So. 
um, pulled out my phone. I started looking for some Walmarts in the Fort Worth, Dallas area. I'm not seeing anything right off the freeway. And also, I'm not, I'm not really wanting to get stuck in a big town. So I went back a little west to a city called Oaks something. Anyway, it's less than a mile off the freeway and it's before Fort Worth and it's gonna work for tonight because their low is 34, it won't freeze overnight. Get back on the road tomorrow and hell, put 500 miles on, head east, so. All right, we're almost done here and then I can take a break. Well, alrighty, just got into Cisco, Texas. Cisco, <laughs> and all the and it's 33 degrees, which means this is the first time in five days that I have seen temperatures over the freezing mark. guys so I pretty much arrived I'm like one mile away from Walmart where I'm gonna spend the night here in Hudson Oaks and um, a couple videos ago I had actually had multiple I think three comments on people asking me how I calculate miles per gallon in the RV and uh, I didn't realize that uh, actually some people don't know how you can actually uh, keep track of your mile per gallon uh, average in your vehicle so I was gonna show you how I how I do that real quick uh, basically I, I keep a log the date location the price the gallon um, and I'll show you what I do so I what you have to do is write down what your odometer rating is uh, that's one thing you do every time you fill up the other thing is you have, um, have to fill it the same way each time so when I set it and then I auto do it so it pumps as soon as it clicks off that it's full that's done right then don't try and top it off and squeeze it six more times you want to keep it as steady as possible so you get the most accurate reading the other thing is I like to at least dip below half a tank if I can closer to like a quarter tank left of gas that way you're getting a more accurate reading rather than just filling it up every time you get under three quarters full let it go under a half each time and then you'll get you know a better usage uh, basically what you do is I always like to get my receipt so that I can come back in and not have to go back outside and look at anything but I plug in uh, the price and how much I paid and what the odometer is. I look at the last three digits. So it's 102,612. So I just take the 612, I write that down. I go back to my last odometer reading when I filled it up, was it 474? So get your calculator out. So input 612 and then subtract that by the previous reading of 474 equals you get a number, 138. Now divide that number by the amount of gallons that you just last put in, which was, for me, 16.98. Equals 8.12. That is my miles per gallon. So I write that down right here. I just do 8.1. And then you can kind of look back and kind of get an average. So it's 8.1 today, but previously it was 7.4. 9.2, 8.5, 8.4, 7.1, and on and on and on. Basically take the last five fill-ups and uh, average those out. So I'm getting roughly about 7.5 7 miles per gallon on this beautiful rig. It's nasty. But hey, it can't beat. I've paid under $1.90 a gallon for gas the last three fill-ups. Pretty cool. All right, you guys take it easy. It's actually a really good thing I decided to uh, stay here for the night where I did before I got into Fort Worth because there has been a tanker explosion on I-20. Uh, all lanes, east and west, shut down. They say 16 hours is what they're saying. They're going to let the tanker burn out naturally. So 16 hours before they even reopen I-20, which means tomorrow morning, I don't even know. We'll have to wait and see here. There's no sense driving through it in my mind because you're just going to be going through town and all these side roads and you're going to spend the next 16 hours in traffic. So, hey, I'll just hang out here. All right, guys, I'm hunkered down here at uh, a Texas Walmart for the night, which is great. I'm past all the frozen stuff. It's just raining here, wet and nasty. And uh, I'll be heading out of here tomorrow, probably maybe even getting out of Texas. It depends on how well it goes. Uh, it's really weird. The Walmarts here, they have stars on them because I guess it's Texas instead of having the normal Walmart sign above it. I just noticed a little stuff. All right, you guys have a great night and I will talk to you tomorrow. Hey guys, Jack's here along with his human servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our RV channel. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up below. Uh, don't forget to watch all of our other videos. We got some great material out there. 
Subscribe to our channel so you can get the latest updates here on the road. Can you say hi? Talk to you guys later.